And it wasn't just a matter of the fact that he was willing to destroy $4 billion worth of the taxpayer's property, which was criminal, okay, but that he was undermining, uh, abandoning two or three critical things. One, NASA as an organization committed to the exploration of the universe when they're abandoning their premier instrument, their pre, uh, premier project, abandoning NASA as an embodiment of the pioneer spirit. You know, I mean, after all, uh, how's NASA ever going to go to the moon or Mars if it is afraid to go to Hubble? And this was the explicit reason. This is too risky for us. I mean, literally, uh, the excuse was fear. Okay? Uh, and to say that this is the level of timidity that would be accepted at, at, at the leadership and as, as, as the, the fundamental philosophy of an organization that's supposed to be committed to exploration. Okay? And then, uh, and that takes you to uh, the broader issue, well, two broader issues, which is the value of the search for truth and the commitment to courage. Courage is a virtue. Okay? It's one of the four classical virtues. Okay? Justice, courage, wisdom, moderation. Those are the four virtues. And the Christians add faith, hope, and charity. But these are the four virtues of the ancient Greeks. And the, this is a, it's a fundamental virtue. It is a virtue without which none of the other virtues are operable. It is arguably the most important virtue. Okay? It does no good to be just if you lack the courage to fight for justice. Okay? It does no good to be wise if you lack the courage to do what you know you should do, and so forth. Okay? He was willing to abandon that. And then finally, Hubble. Okay? It's not just a particular scientific achievement. It is, in a sense, uh, a symbol of humanity's commitment to the search for truth. It is, in a sense, the most noble artifact of the 20th century. It is, for us, what the Gothic cathedrals were to uh, the people of the high Middle Ages who built them to symbolize their most highest ideals and aspirations of, of that civilization. This is the greatest symbol of us. You know, people 500 years from now are not going to look at our paintings from this period of time. Jackson Pollock and so forth. Okay, I, I, I tend to doubt very much they will uh, think very much of our current popular music. Um, the, um, okay, uh, and, uh, and they won't care at all about our various geopolitical struggles between nations, most of which will no longer exist in their current cons forms. Okay, but they will look at this, they will look at Hubble and the images that it brought back and of the universe and say, these people were noble. Okay. And then he was willing to abandon that. Well, similarly, NASA as an institution, the human space flight program as an institution, is a, it, it, it's not merely what it does. Okay. Because frankly, except for Apollo and Hubble, it hasn't done that much. Okay. Uh, but it's what it stands for in terms of defining who we are. It's about who we are. Okay? That, that's what it is. And I, I mean, that's why Americans support NASA fundamentally. It's not the weather satellites. Okay? Uh, it's not the reconnaissance satellites. It's, it's to some extent, the, uh, they, 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 they do like getting back the images of the Mars rovers and things, and they are curious about some of the answers that we're getting, and they are hopeful about the prospect of opening up a new frontier in space, yes, but ultimately it's about who we are. We do this because this is who we are. And frankly, this is who we have to be if we are ever to open the space frontier. So what you had here was an attack not just on NASA but on the American identity. Okay? The identity of the pioneers of the frontier. Okay? 
the um, and the so it's got to be repelled with losses to the enemy. Okay, so this is the immediate crisis. I think we can win it. We won Hubble. We were the first people to stand up for Hubble other than astronomers who could be discounted. Oh, you're an astronomer, so question you want your stupid telescope. Okay. We, we, we were the ones who said there are issues here that go way beyond, you know, the interests of Mikulski's district. Okay. This is about who NASA is. It's about who America is. And this is about, okay, this is not just about, you know, Ari's one. I, you know, I don't care about Ari's one. Okay, frankly, I, I was never that enthusiastic about it, and I thought Orion was oversized, and it should have been sized down to be launchable on an Atlas V, which we had, and so forth. You can make all kinds of criticisms like this, but ultimately, but they didn't say that. Okay, they didn't rationalize or try to improve Griffin's architecture. They didn't do anything. They just said, this is not who we are. Okay. Um, well, it's got to be who we are. So, we need to win this. We need to go and do what we've done on several occasions in the past, which is to take the trouble and go and meet with congressmen in their home offices, and this is entirely possible to do, and talk to them about this. Okay? The bottom line is NASA needs to have a goal, a goal that is proximate enough to give focus and meaning to its activity. That goal should be humans to Mars, and the first and most critical a uh, piece of technology that has to be developed to enable that is heavy lift, okay? The, 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 and, uh, and the Senate bill has the money to do it. So bottom line is we want you to support that. That's the out, you know, these congressmen, when you go in there, you give them a complicated briefing, and they say, well, what do you want me to do, okay? That's what we want them to do. Okay, that's what we want them to do. Now, we'd like them to go further, sure. We'd like them to become champions for our vision. Okay, of that this country needs to set its sight on Mars, that we need to embrace the challenge that has been staring us in the face since 1973 and which we have largely shirked. Okay, we need to do that. We need to do that to be who we are. We need to, I mean, look, we have everything we have because of predecessors who had the guts to come across an ocean and build a civilization in a wilderness. Okay, a grand civilization, which not only includes a continental nation committed to liberty, okay, and whose bayonets have held up the sky for liberty around the world for the past half century, but uh, a place that, 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 that tens or hundreds of millions of people have come to realize liberty for themselves, a place which has demonstrated the value of liberty and human rights to the world so that it's fundamental values have been emulated in dozens of countries um, around the world um, and laid out the path towards the human future in that respect. A place whose inventors have created the modern world, okay, because it is a country that embraces challenge in all areas, okay. That country that was responsible for inventing electricity and the telegraph and the telephone and I might add to inventors who came from Ohio, Thomas Edison, okay, who was born here in Ohio. And the, of course, the Wright brothers gave us flight and gave us motion pictures and gave us all kinds of things. Uh, and furthermore, made the statement that progress is good, the human mind can accomplish it. And there are no barriers to people who embrace challenge in this way and, uh, the, and are willing to not accept that things are impossible. Flying, okay, flying into the air, flying to the moon, okay. Uh, we chose Dayton because as different as the Wright brothers' accomplishment is from a Saturn V, they were both in one sense completely emblematic of the, of the same thing. I mean, human flight, realizing an age-old dream, reaching for the moon, another statement of doing something that is impossible. Those are the two most common expressions for an impossible thing, okay? And the one was invented here and the other was piloted by a guy born here, okay? 
But this is the values we have to defend. And this is the message we have to send. And, you know, we are not that many people. But uh, all great things start with little things. All great movements start as small movements, okay? And it is the advocates of ideas, which are not generally accepted, who are those who move humanity forward. Those people who are content with the world as it is, leave the world as it is, okay? The, um, so we have a critical role, uh, as small as we might be, uh, as modest as our financial and other resources might be. We nevertheless represent an idea which is coming to be as powerful a dream as humans flying in the air once was. Okay? The, not just the freedom of the skies, the freedom of the universe, the freedom of a society fundamentally without limits, okay, that is not limited to one planet, that has before it this enormous prospect of an infinite universe of worlds. Okay. The Baruki group are going to give their results in January. My guess is they'll report hundreds of planets. Now those won't be Earth-like yet because they're too close to their sun, but a year later when they've had more time and the planets can go longer periods, there'll be more and more and more. We live in an infinite universe of worlds. And the ability to show then that these are attainable, that, uh, that they are not an infinite universe which is out of reach, but an infinite universe that is fundamentally within human reach. This is ultimately what the significance of Mars is. The, um, that we do not live in a limited universe of limited resources where human aspirations need to be limited to conform to such limits and various regulatory authorities need to be empowered to enforce the acceptance of such limits and so forth. Um, but rather, we live in a world of infinite possibilities where rather than human existence needing to be preserved by suppressing human aspirations and human freedom. Rather, human existence can be enhanced to the greatest by endowing as many people as possible with freedom and the skills and educations required to, to use it. And ultimately, everything hinges on this, everything. The, the issues here as I've commented in the past, but I'll just, I just need to restate it. This thing is much more important than about Mars colonies as such, as important as they might be. This thing is about the general view of the human future that people have. And the general view of the human future that people have will determine their actions not in the future, but today. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that the sons and daughters of Chinese peasants are going to college and becoming scientists and engineers? The person who says it is that there are limited resources in the world will say that is bad. The, 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 the development of countries like China need to be suppressed because these people are going to be as rich as us. They'll have automobiles and they're going to use resources and oil and all this stuff and we've got to do everything we can to screw them up. Okay? so that they do not get what we have, okay? On the other hand, if you believe that the resources accessible to humanity are determined only by our creativity, then you say it is a wonderful thing that the sons and daughters of Chinese peasants are becoming scientists and engineers, okay? Because right now, America with 4% of the world's population is creating half the inventions in the world. And as honorable as that may be, and as proud as an American I, I, I